Welcome to Choose Life. I am Pastor Gina Coleman. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I invite you to rejoice and be glad in it as well. No matter what's going on, the Lord has given us the day to rejoice. And besides, it's better to rejoice than to be sad. Even if you have to look for something to rejoice about. Actually, it's not too much that we, too far that we have to look um, to rejoice about something anyway because we get to rejoice because Jesus loves us and he laid down his life for us. So welcome to a brand new day and welcome to Choose Life. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you want to make choices in your life that will help you stay in close relationship with the Lord. Um, if you want to make choices to learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and live by what he said. If you want to make choices that will allow you to have a more joyful life, this is the channel for you. So. Once again, welcome to Choose Life. I'm going to just go ahead and pray and then get right into the message. Father, we love you. We are so grateful this morning to you, Lord God. Our hearts are filled with thanksgiving. We thank you that you afforded a way, God, that we can be right in relationship with you, Father. We thank you for Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God. We thank you that he is the one who intercedes for us. We thank you that he is the one that laid down his life for us so that we could be reconciled unto you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you so much, Father. We thank you for the great plan of salvation. So we extol you and we magnify you. We give you glory and honor, Lord God. We thank you that you're perfecting those things that which concern us. We thank you that you're the glory and the lifter of our heads. We thank you that you have a plan of good and not evil for us, a plan that give us hope hope and a future and an expected end. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, and praise and exalt you, holy and righteous King. You are all together lovely. You are mighty. You are beautiful. And we thank you this morning for the opportunity to hear your still small voice that we will live the righteous life that you have prepared for us. Father, in Jesus name, we just commit ourselves unto your hand this morning. I commit this video into your hand this morning in the name of Jesus and may your word God penetrate our spirits Lord God in Jesus name we thank you Father we thank you Lord Jesus Christ in Jesus name we pray amen oh almost got caught up <laughs> hallelujah so let's go ahead and just get right into the message so the day's title is learn the difference between conviction and condemnation it says, when the enemy is attacking, it is important to check your heart and ensure that you didn't open the door to him. But know this, the enemy will try to make you feel as if you've done something wrong, even when you haven't. He's just wicked like that. I convict the enemy condemns. I want you to, I want to teach you how to distinguish between conviction of sin and condemnation. One way to discern the difference is that conviction comes from my heart of love for you. I am love and I will not condemn you for a sin that opens the door to the enemy. Just repent, hallelujah, we praise you God. Just repent, the Holy Spirit said. He said, just repent. And I thank God that he wants us to learn the difference between um, conviction and condemnation. Uh, I thought about telling this uh, story when, um, before I made the video. So I was in my walk early on, <laughs> like really, really early on my walk, in my walk, I would not uh, do anything on, for, on Saturday nights because I did not want to uh, mess up, right? So if I did something, I would do it on Friday and I would spend all day Saturday repenting um, as if I needed to, right? But that was in my immaturity and it's okay, right? God knew my heart wanted to please him. And so um, I would actually be condemning myself. As a matter of fact, when I turned 50, um, the Lord said to me, you are a hard judge on yourself. He told me I was hard on myself. 
and um that was only eight years ago <laughs> um which that came from um just being condemned and allowing myself to be condemned from the uh by the enemy and i know a lot of us uh, may have or, or did early on in our walk, we would condemn ourselves. The enemy would condemn us and then we would get in agreement with the condemnation. But the Lord says that he will never ever condemn us for a sin. He will convict us. And it's so wonderful. I mean, we know it, but it's so wonderful because he already knows that we all fall short of the glory of God. He knows that we are imperfect in this flesh. So it wouldn't be fair of God to uh, try to want us to walk uh, perfectly when we, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's, it's so impossible that he sent the Holy Spirit to help us even to live the life that he wants us to live. So <clears throat> I thank God that I mature and I hope that you mature, but the Lord said that he wants us to know the difference and so for those that may not know the difference the lord convicts he convicts us he he um tells us like kind of like that's wrong but not like that's wrong and you need to no it's not that he convicts us and gets us to a place where we are feeling uh sorrowful for what we did but not bad that we can't approach God, right? Conviction uh, causes us to go to God. Condemnation causes us to go away from God. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Conviction causes us to turn and to repent and go to God. Condemnation causes us to go away from God as if we can never go back to God because we messed up and we said such horrible things and we've done such horrible things that we can't go back to God and that he's unforgiving and that he's going to be angry and he's upset. That's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to be condemned and, and get into a place of sadness and get into a place of, of worry and just like can't return unto God because he knows that we can return unto God. And so the Holy Spirit said, I want you to know the difference. When I convict you, it's because I love you. And even when you fall short, hallelujah, hallelujah, you just repent he said he said just repent I don't have I, I I don't want to I will never ask you he said convict you of a sin hallelujah that's why every morning the mercies are new because we fall short hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Savior thank you God Almighty thank you Lord he said um he wanted us to distinguish the difference to know the difference. If you and I fall short and we're in this place of sadness, depression for days and weeks and stuff, know that that's condemnation. If you uh, can't go to God with a repentant heart, know that that's condemnation. Hallelujah. I thank God. Glory to God. I thank the Lord that the door of his heart is always wide open when we mess up. And I know some people probably think that I don't mess up. I don't cuss. I don't have sex. But sometimes we mess up in our minds, the thoughts, and we need to go and repent, turn, change our mind, go back to God and say, I don't want to do this. Forgive me, Father, for thinking this way, behaving this way, doing this. But the Holy Spirit said, I do not condemn you. I convict you for the purpose of change, for the purpose of godly sorrow, for the purpose of repent so that we can get some things right with the Lord. Hallelujah. But he said, I want you to distinguish the difference. Know the difference. So I'm going to say one time, if you find yourself sitting in a place of the mistake that you made over, I don't know, over even an hour or so, you are condemning yourself and you are in agreement with the devil. You're in agreement with the devil. All right. So fall out of agreement with the devil. Turn and go towards Christ so he can heal you. Once you repent, he'll begin to heal you and begin to show you and I how to get on the right track in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read the scripture. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, before I read, uh, before I go on, he said, I will convict you even of the sin that you opened, the door that you opened to the enemy. I'm going to convict you. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to do that. He's not going to say, I told you. 
He's not going to do that. And I feel the love of God just saying unto us this morning, I don't convict. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't condemn. I feel the love of God saying, I don't condemn. I convict. Amen. All right. So the, uh, the first scripture is Romans 8, 1, Romans 8, 1. And we know this for sure. This is a scripture that we know. And the title in my Bible, it says life through the spirit. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's none. God is not going to condemn you. God is not going to tear you down. He's not going to beat you and I. Hallelujah. Because we fall short. I mean, some parents beat their kids because they fall short. <laughs> but God is not going to beat us because we fall short. He said there's no condemnation. Just repent. Hallelujah. Just, just come and make it right with me. So that you can get on the right track. So that you won't feel downtrodden. You won't feel feel so broken just come to me and repent can you imagine how it would have been if adam and eve just went to god and repented we'd be on another different track here <laughs> things would be so different but they hid they hid because they were under condemnation they had the same liberty that we had to say god i'm sorry father i'm sorry but they didn't. They hid themselves. And that's another thing um, I just want to say to you. If you fall short and you go in hiding, you're in condemnation, not conviction. Hallelujah. Okay, the next scripture is, hallelujah, thank you, Father. Romans 8.34. Romans 8.34 is our next scripture. Romans 8.34 says, who then is the one who condemns? No one. No one, not God, not Jesus, nor the Holy Spirit. Those are the ones that count. Others may condemn us, but the ones that count, none of them condemn. It says Christ Jesus was raised to life and is at the right hand of God and is also interceding. So there's no need for Jesus to condemn us and he's interceding like we do this to people in the natural. We condemn them and pray for them at the same time. <laughs> but God said, no, I don't condemn. But my son, your big brother, your savior, he is interceding for you when you fall short, when you make mistakes. It is the devil that condemns and he alone is the one that condemns us. So if you feel condemned, know that it's the devil or yourself. Shake him off, bind him, rebuke him, and go towards God. If it's yourself, shake yourself off, shake those thoughts off, cast those thoughts down, get rid of those thoughts, and go to God so he can heal you and restore you. Amen? And the last scripture, hallelujah, is John 8, 10, and 11. It says, when Jesus raised him up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? This is the New King James Version. Version. She says, no one, Lord. And Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. You so this is the story of the woman um, caught in adultery. <clears throat> she was caught in adultery. And I can never understand why they just bought just the woman. She, you can't be in adultery by yourself. You have to be in adultery with someone else. And so Jesus asked her, where are, you, where are your accusers? Where are those that condemn you? And she said, no one. He said, there's no one basically. Well, neither do I condemn you. But what he did tell her, go and sin no more. So the Lord doesn't condemn us. He convicts us. And in that conviction, he wants us to stop sinning. Stop doing the things that, that Jesus, that we do. For the betterment of ourselves. That's why he wants us to stop him. He's not trying to be like, Lord, with a hammer, like, you better get it right. No, it's for the betterment of ourselves. This woman, 
caught in adultery she will never ever ever she would have never ever been able to have her own family there was some brokenness inside might have been a generational curse you cannot be happy in adultery the person the man the woman they'll always be with their spouse and God wanted her to stop not only because it was a sin, but it was because for the betterment of herself. And so the Lord, when we are uh, committing some kind of sin or we fall short, it is only because God loves us. I'm sorry, my um, camera cut off, but God, we just thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy and your kindness to us. And I pray, Lord God, that if any one of us are under condemnation this morning in the name of Jesus, that we will be free, Lord God, and just come right running to you, Lord God, ready to receive your love, your mercy, God, hallelujah, your forgiveness, Lord God, that we would no longer be under condemnation, the enemy's condemnation in the name of Jesus Christ. May we learn it and know the difference, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you all. If you're under condemnation this morning, decide I'm not going to be under condemnation. I'm going to go to my Father. I'm going to repent. I'm going to ask him for forgiveness so that I can go on to the next place. Um, being under condemnation weighs you down that you can't move. It's a weight. You can't move because you think that God is this way. God is like mad. He's got his arms folded. He's not like that. His arms are wide open. As we know from the story of the prodigal son, when the prodigal son, the Bible says, when he came to his senses, he returned to go back home. Hallelujah. He went back home and not just back home, but he went back into the father's arms and the father saw him afar off and came running to meet him. So when you and I, we mess up, run to God because God is coming to meet us too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God bless you. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel. God bless you. Have a great day.